I'd like you to imagine your dream life. See the version of you who has what you want to have, feels how you want to feel, and is who you want to be. I'm Brittany Hoops, your hypnotherapist and manifestation coach, and this is the show where I'll teach you to master the full power of your mind, to guide you on your journey towards Destination Manifestation. Uh, yeah, take a step back. This is the Destination Manifestation Podcast, a podcast about using the power of your mind to manifest your dream life. We get into stories, lessons, exercises, guided visualizations, and conversations designed to help you align with your goals. Hosted by me, Brittany Hoops. And today, we're going to focus on a very special topic here. I'm going to help you become the kind of person who takes action on your dreams. You want to be him? You want to be her? I bet you do. I'm going to help you move from being just a dreamer to actually being a doer, okay? And so we're going to cover the top five mistakes that are keeping you from being the kind of person who takes action on your goals. Seriously, as a hypnotherapist, as a coach, I see these set of mistakes happen again and again and again. And I just want to save you the time and the heartache, okay, by catching them early and doing something about it, which is what we're going to focus on here today. So I will say this, when it comes to taking action on your goals, your dreams, your manifestations, a lot of people have the misconception thinking that manifestation's only about the mindset component, right? So you just kind of can sit on the couch and you can do your voodoo visualization mind tricks and the manifestations are just going to kind of materialize in front of you. (laughs) It sounds silly to say this, right? But some people who don't understand manifestation, they think that's going to happen. And I just want to say no, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. Manifestation has a lot to do with mindset. Sure. That's why this podcast exists. But we live in a 3D physical reality, a 3D physical plane, and that requires your action. And better yet, your inspired action, the action that feels fun, that you're drawn to take. Again, this does not mean that we just sit on the couch until a lightning bolt of inspiration strikes. No, it means that we learn how to harness that energy of that inspiration and so that the whole action-taking process that used to feel, you know, laborious and dreadful changes to something that feels easy. And I, I won't say easy. I mean, the actions might be difficult, but ease e full of ease, a sense of ease and flow and fun, right? Because when it feels that way, well, duh, you want to take action <laughs> and you end up making it much further than when you were not taking action, right? So some of us want our goals and dreams so dearly, but it's the taking action part where we start to get stuck. And then that's when the fears come flooding in, right? Now, I will say I have some exciting things to share with this particular episode, right? So the first thing is, you guys may notice, or you may not, which is why I'm pointing it out to you, okay? You might notice a bit of a shift in the way that I start to explain things from here on out moving forward in terms of the kind of content I create here for the show, in terms of the kind of content I create in Instagram or TikTok, if you follow me there, if you're interested in following me there, I always leave the links in the show notes. You might notice over the next few months that I'm going to focus more and more on the identity piece of manifestation because who you are as you progress towards your goals, who you become, who you think yourself to be, and therefore you may be holding yourself separate from your desire because of it, because of that self-concept, it's all so important when it comes to manifesting. Because, I mean, essentially, manifesting at its core is all about identity. And so even when it comes to getting stuck with taking action, whether that comes in the form of procrastination or whatever it may be that keeps you from taking action on your dreams, it usually comes down to who you are being at that time. Because people who take action on their dreams hold a self-concept of themselves that is a very different identity and way of seeing themselves than people who don't take action, right? Because it's those kind of people who see progress, the ones who take action. 
And if you aren't taking action, it's probably because you don't see yourself as the kind of person who does. And that's just hogwash. I mean, that's just why. Why are we doing that to ourselves? <laughs> does anyone use that word anymore? Hogwash. I don't think I even use that word all that much. But that's what this is. It's ridiculous. And the second very special thing that I want to mention, because this episode is so very action oriented and because we move from the mystical to the logistical when it comes to taking action, I want to make this episode like even more concrete for you. OK, even more tangible, even more actionable for you, which is why. I am doing something I have never done here on the show before. So from now until April 23rd, 2024, I'm going to make the date very clear because a lot of you guys go back and listen to old episodes. From now until April 23rd, I'm running a giveaway. Yes. And in this giveaway, you can win a personal, private, 90-minute virtual one-on-one hypnotherapy and coaching session with me. Yes, this is going to help you get unstuck consciously and subconsciously and start taking action on your dreams. So if you lack a plan, we can create a plan together. If you know what to do for your manifestations, but you just can't get yourself to do it, no worries. Let's unblock that shit. (laughs) Okay, let's use the 90 minutes in the way that's going to best help you. I'm going to give one of you lucky listeners, okay, or should we say this, one of you really great manifestors, because one of you guys are going to manifest this, the opportunity to directly work with me. Now, I'll I'll just tell you straight up, a session like this would usually cost over $300, okay? But for one of you, you will win it and it will be for free. So be sure to stick around to the very end of this episode to learn how you can enter to win. So let's do some shape shifting, shall we? All right, let's dive in to these top five mistakes and how you can fix them. Mistake number one, you identify more as a dreamer, not as a doer, okay? You see doers, people who take action as other people, not you. Okay, I kind of touched on this one before, but let's go even deeper here, okay? We call this sitting on the sidelines. We call this lurking, watching, waiting. I mean, think of it this way. How many times have you been scrolling through social media? Okay, maybe you read a post or you saw a video that just really spoke to you, that really resonated with you. You might even save it for later. You might come back and watch that video every day for inspiration, meaning that you might really love that piece of content, right? That video. But you've never even liked or commented on it at all. The person, the creator who made that video has no idea that you exist or that you enjoyed it all that much, right? But you really did. And that content might have changed your life, but you didn't engage, right? (laughs) I'll say this. I do this all the time when it comes to social media. Like, I rarely engage with content. But that doesn't mean that I don't love it or find value from it. But it can be hard if you're a creator, if you're an entrepreneur, it can be hard to remember that people are like this when you look at your numbers, you look at your engagement or your views, and it just kind of feels like crickets, right? You think no one's getting value, but that's just because they haven't told you, not that they aren't. And this sort of behavior, it's fine when it comes to social media consumption, right? But we want to notice this lurking tendency when it begins to crop up in our own lives, especially when it starts impeding on us taking action in our dreams. So where might you be lurking or watching others create, others do things, and you might even dream of doing the same, but instead you were just spending all your time consuming other people's content. Now, I am not saying that we know that there's a ton to learn from other people, but there does become an inflection point where you've gotten all the certifications, you've read all the books, you've followed all the accounts, you've had all the dreams, but you just can't get yourself to do the thing. You can't read books about playing guitar. You know what I mean? Like you have to do it. You get stuck as a dreamer, but not a doer. So I like to say this, some people are meant for the stage, while others are meant to be in the audience. And you get to decide which side of the aisle you want to be on, right? And the truth is, you wouldn't have a show if you didn't have both actors and audience members. 
But when it comes to your dreams, unless your dream is to literally watch other people doing what you want to do, you are going to have to get up and out of your chair. You're going to have to walk up on stage and you have to do it. Okay, even if you flounder while others are watching, and I know that can be a scary thought, but it's a thought to work on. You have to say, I'm meant for the stage. Now, of course, I'm using this metaphor. I mean this figuratively. I'm not saying that you have to take up acting to make your dreams come true unless your dream is to be an actress, right? Maybe let's say uh, your dream is to write a book, okay? And you might not actually need to be on stage to make that dream a reality, but you will need to stop reading other people's books and start typing out your own at some point. That's your stage. You will be on a metaphoric stage the moment you go to share your creation or your dream with the world. We all will be, regardless of what our manifestation is. I would say that this is one of the strongest beliefs that I can credit my success of my current hypnotherapy and coaching business to so far. All right. When I was a little baby hypnotherapist, right, when I was first starting out, I was getting my certifications, right? This was a belief that I held that I was meant for the stage. At that time, I think I remember, you know, I was in my program. You meet all these other students. I was surrounded by students, other hopefuls, hopeful hypnotherapists, right, that wanted to break out into this business. And I noticed a fundamental sort of mindset shift that I had that others just really didn't. And and it was that I believed I was meant for something big and out of the ordinary, And what's funny is this realization actually came to me during a hypnotherapy session that I received from a very talented hypnotherapist and friend of mine at the time. I realized in that session that I was meant for something big. And what's funny is like this was before Big Brother happened. Like, (laughs) oh, Big Brother, I was meant for something big. Oh, I just thought of that. That's insane. It's very crazy how hypnotherapy sessions can give you such a glimpse into the quote unquote future. I call it quote unquote because it's all happening at the same time. It's all, re- all already happened. The past, the present, the future, all simultaneous. So of course I'm going to have a glimpse into I'm meant for something big. And then I end up being on Big Brother and I end up having a big, fruitful, successful business. That's kind of cool. You can, you can experience that in something like hypnotherapy. But in this session, I realized I was meant for something big. Now, at the time, okay, I had zero logical reason to believe that thought. (laughs) Anyone who knew that I was thinking that thought, which I didn't really share with anybody, they would just have to know I was crazy. In fact, if I looked at the 3D physical reality around me, people would have said I was delusional to believe such a thing. I was working a corporate marketing job. I had failed so many businesses before in other sectors, other areas of life. I had zero logical reason to believe that I was meant for the stage, that I was meant for success in bigger ways. But I just had this gut feeling that I was going to do big things and big things beyond being on Big Brother, okay? I wasn't going to do your normal run-of-the-mill, stay-in-line, copy-what-everyone-else-was-doing sort of thing. Ugh, that just felt wrong to me. Now, I realize as I'm sort of like saying this out loud, I realize that sharing this out loud can kind of feel a little full of yourself. (laughs) It sounds that way. And I think that's why a lot of us are hesitant to think that way because we're afraid of what other people might think. Now, at the time, did I scream this from the rooftops and think that I was better than my fellow students? No, of course not. I kept this knowing to myself. And not that just that I was meant for big things, not that I was better from from anyone or compared to anyone. Being meant for the stage doesn't mean that you're better than anyone else. It just means that you're going to do something different than what some other people do. It means that you're willing to put yourself out there. When you go to the theater and let's say you watch a play, the actors, they aren't better people than you sitting in the audience. They're just in a different part of the room from you. They're just faced in a different direction. They're speaking or singing or dancing while you're sitting (laughs) and watching. That's the only difference, right? I mean, isn't that kind of awkward when you think about it? Like, (laughs) we do this as humans. We go to a room where we all sit together and watch other people sing. Like, that's just, that's awkward when you think about it, which is kind of funny considering I did that for so many years. But we have to acknowledge that one is inherently more passive than the other. That's the difference. Sitting is more passive than dancing, than singing, than high kicking or whatever you're doing, right, on stage. 
So knowing that you're meant for big things, that you're meant for the stage, which means you're meant for creation, you're meant for doing rather than sitting and observing, it does not mean that you're better than, but just that you're different than. You're taking different actions. And it assumes you're going to move from a more passive role, which is sitting in the audience where most people sit, and move on to the stage where you do, which is inherently a more active role. I mean, think about it this way. Theodore Roosevelt and and most recently Brene Brown characterizes this as being in the arena, right? Theodore Roosevelt says, even if a man should fail, at least he fails while daring greatly. That's what it means to get up out of your seat and go onto that stage, even if you fail greatly, which I can tell you, I've been on stage multiple times and I've failed many a time in front of many a large audience, and it sucks. (laughs) But does that keep you from doing it? No. You know, I remember going to some conferences early on in my career, being in the audience and thinking, no, I'm the one that's meant to be up there on that stage teaching all this. It's a drive to do. It's not letting fears keep you stuck in your seat. Now, I want you to understand this this concept, okay? This has been coming up a lot in my sessions, and I feel like it perfectly illustrates many of these mistakes that keep us from taking action here, too, okay? I want you to remember that you have an internal world, an inner world of your mind, and an external world that is what we mostly consider our life around us. Okay, your internal world is the world of your thoughts and your emotions. It's all up here in your mind's eye. It happens all up there in your head, in your brain. We can best access and create in this world when we're in a state of hypnosis. It's that deep hypnotic meditative state of relaxation where the static of our conscious mind begins to clear. And it's easier for us to see and hear and sense our internal world. It's where our imagination and our emotions reside. It's deep within the subconscious mind. Now, by repeating affirmations and positive suggestions, which are positive thoughts to yourself, you can train your thoughts. By visualizing our manifestations, we begin to build and create in our inner world. When you think about the mind's eye, if I ask you to visualize something and you can see it there in your mind's eye, that's the eye that sees in the internal world within you. Anything you see in the world around you was first created by someone's internal world, right? It started as a thought. They saw it in their mind's eye before they saw it using their physical eyes, the eyes that I'm batting right here on this video, (laughs) okay? Now, I look at, say, something like an iPhone, okay? I got my phone right here. Someone had to have the idea of a touchscreen phone. Somebody had to say, oh, wouldn't that be cool? Instead of this little Nokia buttons, (laughs) I'm dating myself. Instead of these little buttons that we make it just a glass screen, wouldn't that be nice? Like a little mini computer. I don't know if it was Steve Jobs. I don't know if it was somebody else. But there was a moment before it was a thought. And then there was a moment that after it was a thought. It was birthed within the mind. Okay. There was a time period where the iPhone was created in the internal worlds of the designers, but it wasn't yet physical, meaning you couldn't see, touch, hear, smell it in our physical 3D reality. It was real internally. It was real in the quantum field of all possibility, where all manifestations exist the moment you have that desire. But it was not yet, and I'm not going to say the word real because it was real, but it's not yet perceptible in our 3D physical reality. And so, so many of us look around the 3D physical reality and don't see or touch or taste the thing. We don't perceive it in our 3D and we think it's not real, which is not the case. It's very much real in the quantum field. It's very much real up here in our head. It's just not perceptible yet. Soon, as we say. But the thought of the invention paired with the emotions of those who were inventing it fueled the action of their design. And that action and all the many actions that went into creating, you know, the example of this phone made it a 3D physical reality, made it perceptible to us. And it's through action where we translate what we create in the internal world into our physical reality. Action is the bridge taking the internal to the external. It moved it from a thought paired with an emotion, which we know a thought plus an emotion creates a frequency, a vibration. 
So I always think of it this way. We have our thoughts that create our emotions. Our emotions fuel our actions. Our actions create our results or our manifestations. The thought and the emotion is in the internal world. The action and result is in the external world. And there's we got to bridge that gap between internal and external. Okay? This all applies to your manifestations too. So you see the act of dreaming. Oh, daydreaming. What if? I'll get to that. All the dreaming you might do. It can often feel sort of like a false sense of action if we're not careful. In your internal world, there's a lot of action going on, which is great. I mean, we want that imagination, dreaming, visualization. It's all your subconscious mind. Even doers still need to dream, okay? But use that dream to spur action in your external world. Because when you dream and then you don't do, when I have a client that comes to me saying, you know, I'm visualizing it, I can see it, I can this, but I'm not taking action, that tells me that there's a block, there's a loose wire in there, there's a clogged pipe, there's something that's not allowing that internal energy to manifest itself through action, through you, and express itself externally. Okay, there's a missing connection. The energy and creation of your internal world should fuel its external expression through your action. And when that's not happening, you have to figure out what is blocking that energy, what is blocking the transmutation of the internal world motivation expressed through you as external world action. And of course, we figure out these misconnections, these blockages all the time through hypnosis. That's what hypnotherapy One of the many reasons and applications it can be used for. Which leads me to mistake number two. You don't believe that you can. This thought typically is the loose circuit. It's the block. It's the thing that's keeping all that internal energy from being expressed externally. Okay, and it's one of the biggest reasons why we stay frozen and stuck in our seats in the audience and don't get up to go take action. Okay, we don't believe that we can which means several things. One, you might need to give a little bit more attention to the dreaming, to the imagining that you're doing in your internal world, in your inner world, which you experience through your subconscious mind, especially in that deep hypnotic meditative state. In that state, you can do anything. You can visualize, you can sense, you can imagine just about anything, and you can be successful every single time. That's what I love about it. In your internal world, you're the best singer ever. In your internal world, you can do the thing. You are a millionaire. You you can be anything you want to be. You get to create it. It's amazing. You get to choose. And you can be successful every single time. Isn't that fun? And as you repeat that deep within your subconscious mind, you create habits of thought. You create new neural networks, new synaptic connections. Let's put it this way. If you were getting an fMRI done on your brain, a brain scan, you would see the exact same areas of the brain light up as if you were taking action in your external world. Isn't that nuts? It's our same brain that operates our internal world and expresses our action externally. Same brain. (laughs) <laughs> that's why you have the that's why the internal world is giving the instructions is giving the blueprint so that you can do it and express it externally. That's why there have been studies done that show a group of people who purely imagine that they're lifting weights and then there was another group that actually physically lifted those weights and yet we still see muscle mass build in the group that only imagined it in their minds. Like That is so wild to see physical manifestations come from pure thought alone. Isn't that crazy? It's why athletes practice their visualization. Their brain, and your brain too, this applies to you too, your brain doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know, oh, we're only imagining this. It fires and wires the exact same way as if it was doing it in real life, which I hate that term because your internal is just as real if not realer at some points in time, then you're external. And so for this reason, visualizing and dreaming your intended action and outcome is very beneficial to you. But in that imagining, you have to believe that you can, okay? Don't go practicing you messing up. (laughs) That's, That's practicing the wrong thing. Don't practice and rehearse your fears. You have to see, feel, and experience success. 
Okay, our imaginations, gosh, guys, I think we belittle imagination. I feel like I've said this on the show before. We think like imaginations just for like kindergartners that like draw, you know, pictures of monsters underneath their bed, right? We we belittle imagination, but really our imaginations are so powerful. And sometimes we don't use their power for good. A lot of times we don't use their power for good, for good. That's why anxiety and fears exist, okay? Anxiety and fear is the negative application of a powerful imagination. We place the power of our observation and our, our focus on imagining negative, unsuccessful outcomes. I mean, that's the definition of worrying. To use our actor metaphor, it's like rehearsing the wrong lines, I mean, it becomes kind of silly when you think of it that way. Like, why would we practice something we don't want when our imaginations are so powerful and can create that for us? So let's just continue with the manifestation of wanting to write your own book, okay? You could imagine anything. So why would you choose to imagine and rehearse writer's block, right? You know that wouldn't help you. So if you find yourself making the mistake of not believing that you can take the action, make sure in your inner world, and you're dreaming, at the very least, you're taking successful action there. And you're repeating this mental rehearsal daily. I would say even twice a day. Ideally, right as you go to sleep at night, as you fall asleep, and right when you wake up first thing in the morning. Because that's when your brain is most naturally in this, you know, alpha and theta, meditative, hypnotic brainwave state that is conducive to this kind of brain training. The repetition is what builds up the belief. Because a belief is purely a thought you keep thinking, a repeated, practiced, mentally rehearsed thought. And when you look at it that way, a belief in your action is purely an action that you keep mentally taking, mentally rehearsing. The more you take it in your inner world, the more you believe that you can in your outer, in your external world. And when you believe that you can in your mind, you start actually taking that action physically in real life. In fact, that's actually one of my favorite procrastination hacks. Next time you feel yourself dreading doing something, I want you to try this. I instruct my clients to start taking action in a state of hypnosis and only get like halfway through the action. So when I say taking action, I mean visualizing yourself in your inner world, taking that action, but stopping like halfway through, okay? Then you come out of hypnosis. Ideally, don't do this right before bed because you'll want to take action afterwards. You come out of that state of hypnosis and just see what happens. Here's the thing. Our brains hate stopping in the middle, okay? Have you ever tried to sing half a verse of your favorite song? No, please try it right now. See what your brain wants to do. Your brain wants to finish it. It feels off until it's done, right? And so when you practice half of your action in the state of hypnosis, when you come out of hypnosis, your brain wants to finish it. Boom, procrastination solved. Mistake number three that may be preventing you from taking action. You don't have a drive or a why for your actions. This is so important. What drives you? Why the heck are you wanting to do this? I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to take action. There's very few actions that we really have to take. I mean, feed yourself, get some sleep, drink water, (laughs) right? Those are the actions you have to take. You most likely don't have to take this action. So why do you want to? Now, us humans, gosh, guys, we're so fickle. (laughs) We don't like being told what to do. Who would have known? (laughs) We will put up obstacles in our way again and again and again unless we have a deep desire to do something. You cannot force yourself. Have you noticed that? (laughs) You can't force yourself. Forcing yourself doesn't work. Not in the long term, really. Whenever I'm working with a client who wants to take action, but they haven't yet, and they just kind of seem perplexed as to why they have not, I'll always ask them this question. I'll ask them, what benefits do you receive by not taking that action? Whether we're conscious of it or not, a lot of times we don't take action or we don't do something because we're actually receiving a benefit from not doing the thing. I see this with my weight loss clients all the time. I ask them, why do you want to lose weight? And they'll have their reasons for why, right? That's why they're seeing me. And then I'll ask them, why don't you want to lose weight? 
And most of the times we've never asked ourselves that question. Why am I not doing the thing? Because if they haven't lost the weight so far, all that means is that the scales are out of balance. (laughs) And I don't mean the bathroom scales, okay? Although perhaps if you want to lose weight, perhaps they are a little out of balance there too. What I mean is the benefit of what you're receiving by not losing the weight, meaning the benefit of holding on to that excess weight, is stronger than the benefit of actually losing the weight. Okay? The scales are out of balance. It's not permanent which is a good thing. You can change this. It's just where the scales are tipped right now without the awareness. So maybe this particular person who wants to lose weight, maybe they enjoy the taste of sugar more than they think they would enjoy being able to climb the stairs with a greater sense of ease, right? And not be so out of breath or have that increased energy. Maybe they enjoy blending into the crowd and not drawing very much attention to themselves. Maybe they like that more than the compliments that they may receive with a slimmer figure. Okay, this isn't everyone, but here are just kind of some of the most common benefits you might receive by not taking action that you don't even realize. It's the same with smokers. There's usually a benefit to smoking that is outweighing the benefits to stopping. And this can be very deep-seated which is crazy because you think, oh my gosh, the benefit to stopping means I get to live longer. But the benefit to continuing to smoke might be that I get to talk with my boss on smoke breaks and I learn about new sales opportunities or whatever it is, right? And so usually it takes reaching some sort of breaking point where we can flip those scales. And it's the same with people who don't take action on their goals. This is literally the definition of procrastination, right? Because usually at some point, Those scales flip for procrastinators. The pain of that deadline and the consequences of missing that deadline now outweigh the pain of actually taking the action. And so it's only then that this person will start to do the thing that they wanted to do because the pain became too much. The scales flipped. They were, they, they switched their balance. So I want you to look at yourself and look at this action that you've been meaning to take. Okay. Which choice is less painful for you now? Let's let's put it this way. The beautiful thing is that we can use this dynamic to our advantage, too. If we know that we are joy and pleasure-seeking beings who avoid pain and make choices and decisions that are fueled by reward, well, we just simply have to ensure that the psychological reward that's paired with that action is strong enough to flip those scales in the opposite direction, meaning you have to amplify and magnify the emotionality behind your why. Why do you want the result that this particular action will give you? Because this why is going to drive your actions. This why needs to outweigh the perceived pain of actually doing the thing. It has to be worth it. Now, I talked about having a life purpose a couple episodes ago, right? Go back and listen to that podcast if you're interested. But a lot of times our strongest why coincides with our life purpose. It's our driver. It's the fuel for it all. So, for example, it drives my actions when I think about how short life truly is. Like, I am freaking 34 years old. Like, where did the time go? (laughs) Like, I still feel like I'm 15. Like, I'm definitely like 15-year-old Brittany in my mind, right? And I look at my body and I'm like, whoa, what happened? It makes me want to cry. I love life so much. I want to live as long as humanly possible. Like, I will be first in line when they do some sort of Cairo freeze and I can live forever when that, you know, sci-fi tech stuff becomes a thing. Okay. (laughs) Sign me up, right? It frightens me to think that there's not enough years and free time available to me to read all the books that I have on my to read list or even to accomplish all my goals. And so it drives my action when I think about how short life truly is and the whole scheme of things. I don't like biology telling me what to do telling me that I have a finite amount of time in this incarnation to do the things that I want to do. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I love the current form that I am in. I love being Brittany. She's great. I don't want, I don't know if I'm going to be some aunt in my next life and I can't read all these books I want to read, okay? <laughs> I got to read them now while I'm me. And so when I dwell on this fact, which I rarely do other than when I'm ranting about it to you guys, okay? But when I do, you better bet it drives me to take action. 
If I have a certain amount of time here on Earth, I don't want to watch some crappy game show on Netflix. Okay, unless it's Is It Cake. I think I've talked about Is It Cake before on this show. Me and my husband do like that show. That is crap TV I will continue to watch. (laughs) Okay, I want to get out of the audience and get my butt there on stage. Move from being a dreamer to a doer because I know I was brought on this earth to create what I want to experience. And so were you. And I'm going to have to kick that into gear via my action. So answer me this, what is your why? Why do you want this result more than anything in the world? Why do you want it more than your previous in action? Find a reason. Give your brain the instructions and it will find a reason. All right, let's tackle mistake number four. Mistake number four is that you have been waiting for permission. You know, I I haven't talked about it very much because I was so busy doing it, but I just wrapped up a group coaching program. I think you might have heard me talk about it, you know, six, eight weeks ago or so on the podcast. But in this particular round of this program, we had some amazing students. And in the workbooks, I literally created a teacher's note for my students to fill out and sign. And it had an official looking stamp and signature section that gave themselves permission to follow their dreams. So many of us are still waiting for permission, still waiting at the bus stop of our youth, wondering when some adult is going to tell us that we can go do the things that we want to do. And we can give our brains some understanding for this, some compassion, right? It's a pattern that is deeply embedded into our subconscious minds. As kids, we're often taught that we have to wait for permission to do certain things. That's our introduction to the world. And so from the ages from zero to seven, our subconscious minds are just sponges soaking in the patterns and the conditioning around us. No one tells you, at least this didn't happen for me, no one just comes up to you and says, congrats, you're good now. You don't need to ask for permission anymore. You're an adult. Just go do whatever you want to (laughs) do. It's just kind of expected that one day you realize that you have your own free will. And a lot of times that happens much more gradually, especially if you have kind parents that are making sure you're okay. (laughs) That happens much more gradually than we might expect or think. Okay, I find that people who were big rule followers in school, who got all straight A's, who were teachers' pets, right, they tended to have received a lot of positive reinforcement for this permission-seeking behavior as children. And so then it carries over into their adult lives where they're waiting to receive permission, but no one can give it to them but themselves. So you have to learn how to give yourself permission. Yes, you can do this. Yes, you can start. If you're waiting for permission to somebody, I'm giving it to you here right now, right? Stamp, sign, sign sent. There's your permission slip, okay? This can be for you. Yes, I'm talking about someone just like you. Even if someone has told you in your past that it can't, guess what? It's not their job or responsibility to decide for you, especially when it's someone that we care about and they aren't supportive of our dreams. We might decide to shelve our dreams based on that other person's response. And what a shame. But I just want to say this. Guess what? It isn't their call. It's your call. It might feel nice if they supported you, sure, but they don't have to. And here's why it makes sense, okay? Here's why it makes sense. I share all of this because sometimes some people need things to be more concrete and external, meaning perceptible in our external reality, like we're talking about before, the reality that we can see and touch and smell and taste and sense, right? Sometimes they need to see it there before they're going to offer their support. This is why it can be so painful when our inner world, our internal reality of our dream is so strong, we can visualize our manifestations, they light our heart on fire, we believe in them deeply, and yet when we describe our internal world to other people, when we describe our dreams to people we love, all of a sudden that person, they can't see the vision because they're looking for evidence of it externally, right? And then all of a sudden they start poo-pooing on your dreams. And that stinks and it can hurt. But you have to remember, they can't see or experience your internal world. They don't know the reality of that because they're not in your brain. They can only see the external. So we can't expect them to be on board with it yet. That's why most people find it helpful to, as they say, move in silence. 
Now, I make some exceptions for this with people I know who support me no matter what, but usually, as a general rule, I'll move in silence. For me to describe my internal world and expect someone to fully buy into my vision, that's just really kind of too much pressure to put on someone else. And I don't need to hear that they don't believe it because I wouldn't expect them to. It's my internal world. It's your internal world, too. It's our jobs to define and live and be in that internal knowing, so much so that it becomes an external reality. Then these other people will be there and they'll see. Then they'll know. And to do that, you have to give yourself permission to go there and even start in the first place. Okay, guys, are you ready? This has been a lot so far, but I got the best. I saved the best for last. And our final mistake is mistake number five. You wait for it to look likely. Oh, yoy. This is the age-old manifestation chicken before the egg scenario, right? You want to wait until your manifestation looks likely that it will happen. You want to wait until then to believe it and take action. But here's the thing. It can't look likely unless you believe it and take action first. (laughs) So you say, I have to see it to believe it. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, you're going to have to believe it first in order to see it. That's how manifestation works. So if you haven't been taking action, it might be because you're looking to your external world too much. Like I said before, when we talked about the iPhone, all manifestations start in the internal world in your mind. Our external world, I call it kind of the land of old, crusty manifestations. I'm sure I've said this before. Everything we see, touch, taste, smell, feel around us is the result of our past old thinking. So the thoughts that you're thinking right now, ooh, they're so fresh. (laughs) They're fresh thoughts. The internal world you daydream and visualize right now is so fresh. It's not manifested in the 3D world just yet. There is the perception of a lag in time. And I would say that that's a pretty good thing. I mean, could you imagine having a thought? Let's say a purple elephant. You think about the purple elephant right now and ah, there it is. That would be very scary, right? You would instantly manifest. We don't want that. We want the perception of the lag of time. That would be nuts. Luckily, the universe has gifted us with multiple realities, multiple potentialities, and there is the perception of time between us shifting from one to the other. Now, that amount of time, and I talk about time very loosely because we know it's all relative according to quantum physics, that amount of time is up to you and the amount of resistance that you have to that shift. But that's a topic for another day, honestly. (laughs) That's a whole other can of worms we could open. If you aren't taking action and you're waiting for it to look likely before you take action, I mean, essentially, you're trying to enter the ride through the exit line, okay? You're approaching it backwards. You're going upstream. You're making it harder on yourself than it needs to be. It has to be likely in your internal world first before it can be likely in your external world, before you can will yourself to take action and before it can manifest. And it's when it looks likely, it's when you've built up your internal certainty, it's when you've built up your belief internally that you go, yeah, I'm going to take action on this and make it a reality. And then, of course, the rest follows suit. The rest comes to pass. So let's just do a recap here real quick, okay? The top five mistakes that are preventing you from taking action are you identify as a dreamer, not a doer which means you have to get up and out of your seat and on that stage, and only you can do it. Number two, you don't believe that you can. So if this is you, spend some more time building up that belief in your internal world first. Number three, you don't have a drive or a why to your actions. Why do you want this more than the pain of not doing it? Find it and focus on that. Number four, you've been waiting for permission. Only you know that you can give yourself permission now. And number five, you're waiting for it to look likely. Now you know you have to believe it to see it. So I just want to thank you, travelers, for joining us here today on this journey towards destination manifestation. You are absolutely amazing, and I believe in your dreams more than more than your own mother does. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That's me, all right? And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. And the one other thing I want you to do after listening to this episode is this. Did you know you could ask a question to be answered on this show? 
Yes, guys, I want this to be a conversation, okay? It feels weird just me talking at you. I want you to listen to these episodes. I want your mind to be buzzing and turning and wanting to know what is next. And if you feel that way when you're listening, that means you're doing it right. Okay, I don't want those questions to go unanswered. So I've set up this nifty tool that will allow you to record audio of you asking your manifestation mindset question, and I'll answer it here on an upcoming show. Okay, so I'll drop the link to that in the show notes here, but ask your questions, record your quick audio, and I'll answer your question in an upcoming episode. Sound good? Now, I'm sure after listening to today's episode, you have some new ideas, you have some new alignment, you have some new inspiration to go out there and work towards your goals to take action. But I am going to supercharge that for one of you lucky manifestors. So I mentioned before, I am hosting a giveaway from now until April 23rd, 2024, where you can enter to win a one-on-one virtual hypnotherapy and coaching session with me. Now, Since you were a good little listener, I'm going to share with you now how to enter. However you're listening or watching to the show, whether it be on Apple or Spotify, on YouTube, wherever it might be, I want you to go to the show notes or the description for this episode, and there's going to be a link in the show notes that says a special code phrase, okay? Are you ready? It's going to say, I'm ready to take action. Now, that's your magic link. I want you to click that link and you're going to find an entry page to enter this giveaway. To enter the giveaway, you just have to provide your email address because that's how I'm going to let the winner know that they've won. And there'll be other actions that you can choose to take that will give you bonus entries like following me on Instagram, subscribing to the Destination Manifestation YouTube channel, checking out my website. There's a multiple things. And the great news is Everyone who enters technically wins something because when you sign up for my email list, which is what you do when you enter the giveaway, you also receive a free manifestation hypnosis audio recording. Now, guys, I've had this recording up for a while. You might have even heard me talk about it before. Folks go bonkers for this recording, okay? It's probably the thing that I get the most positive DMs from people thanking me for. People love this recording. And I can't promise that this recording is going to be free forever, okay? So be sure to enter the giveaway, sign up for the email list, and get that recording on or before April 23rd. Now, all music for this podcast is by A-Cubed. And remember, guys, tip the scales in your favor. You have to make sure that the benefit of what you're receiving by not doing that action is way weaker and less than the benefit of doing what you want to do and taking that action. You have to mean that, make more. Tip those scales in your favor, take action, and watch your manifestations materialize before your very eyes. I'll catch you next time. I don't know.